What's up, everybody? My name is Alex. I'm your host here on the Swole Friends podcast, as well as the co-founder and COO of Swolverine. Swolverine is an endurance athlete and active lifestyle brand. We have over 33 different performance powders and daily health supplements that are all proprietary, blend-free, clinically dosed, and scientifically proven effective. So pre, post, intra, your dailies, we have it. We also offer one-on-one nutrition coaching through the Swole Kitchen, online personal training, and competitive fitness programming for our competitive functional fitness and CrossFit athletes looking to pursue their ultimate potential. Episode 32, you guys, I'm so excited to welcome Nick O'Sullivan and Jeremy Kane, aka the Beef Boys, uh, aka <laughs> the founders of the Performance Driven Life Coaching and Online Training Program. On today's show, we're going to talk all things fitness, lifestyle, recovery, who's dating who, what's going on. We'll get into the dirt and all the tea. Maybe, maybe we won't. But. <laughs> Uh, with over 10 years of combined coaching experience, by the end of the podcast, we want you to feel inspired, informed, and driven to get in the gym, to get beefy, or to get lean, and to crush your goals. So, gentlemen, start your engine. The podcast here. Oh. Yeah, that, was, that was impressive. <laughs> Did you practice It's like the mustache, you know? We're going like real full NASCAR driver here. It's yeah, it's got, a, it's got a little bit of length to it. Letting it run wild. <laughs> what's up brandon welcome to the show we do have the meat boys here we're excited oh man uh you guys what's this season of life have going on for you i mean it's the end of some well, one that's not whoa well, not the end of summer but yeah, midsummer. it's midsummer <laughs> we're halfway there that, movie? that movie's horrible it's not horrible it's just so scary. are you guys big movie yeah. people I love movies. I am not, except for when Nick comes into town. I do not go to the movies, although I did watch Barbie the other day. Uh, oh. But Nick forces me to go to the movies. Every like time movies. Comes, we go to the movies, movies are a big part of my life. <laughs> okay. All right. What kind of movies are we watching these days? I just watched Oppenheimer, and that was intense. Um, yeah, man. I'm, I'm a Suits guy. I like to watch movies. Like, I'm on a Suits kick. You would be. Yeah. Are you, drinking, are you drinking your drink out of a licorice straw? What was that? I don't know. One of those environmental safe straws or something that like waters down your straw. You know the Love paper it. straws where halfway through your coffee, is, you start to blend the paper in the coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's Nick loves those. He's in California. <laughs> he knows all about those. He's like, I eat those for breakfast. That's like the dessert after the smoothie. They come up with like so many different types of straws. It's not just like paper. It's like now you're having like a seaweed straw or like the variety is there. I feel like it's a <laughs> I'm like, okay. So we melted things, heated them up. Now we're <laughs> drinking the chemicals. Yeah. Must be good for the environment. Not for my liver, for the environment. Exactly. Oh, the load okay. up on the sugar and what was that, Jer? The load up on the sugar and caffeine. Like that's Ooh. the, that's the yeah. We need paper great. straws, but sugar and caffeine's out there. So it's it's really a, a diet coke out of your drink in there with your licorice straw this morning. Drinking Kool Aid. <laughs> yeah. Like it's past ten a.m. Coke time, baby. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> well, you guys, give me the scoop. Give our listeners a scoop um, on what you guys do. Talk to me about performance driven. Talk to me about how that came up. How you guys met each other. Let's just dive right into this whole synergy of beef that's going on here in this episode. <laughs> If you want yeah. to go first, I guess I could start it off. Me and Jeremy met a long, long time ago, about like three years, maybe four, out in the North Carolina. And so at the time, it was middle of COVID. Um, I was training out in Colorado, working with my buddy uh, Hunter McIntyre, and he wanted to start getting on YouTube and doing like all these fitness events and whatnot because there's nothing else to do. And so he came up with this idea to do like the Murph challenge and he wanted to go for the Murph world record, uh, wanted to make it like a charity event, raise 50, I think we raised close to $50,000 for team RWB, red, white, and blue. Mm -hmm. And uh, the event and team red, white, and blue is uh, located out in North Carolina. And that's where Jamie was at the time. And so that's where we held the event. Flew out there a couple days early, uh, got to the gym. Jeremy was there, and that's where we officially linked up and became BFFs, kind of right on the spot. Um, listen first, to time his, first time we saw it, like, you should have seen his beard at the time. 
yeah. It was it was a grizzly one. It was a work of so it was something. I'll get. I'll just say that. Um, <laughs> and then that was around the time where I was kind of over the Spartan racing and wanted to get into CrossFit because I was talking with Hunter and he had previously gone to the games. Um, and that's kind of more of like my background, you know, having that football background, um, that type of training really, um, drew me. Um, and so started talking with Jeremy and I know that he was coaching other people and whatnot. And so I just was kind of like, you want to train me? <laughs> and that's kind of where you like this. <laughs> We're going yeah, much. I was like, hey, Jeremy, you want to coach me? Um, he showed his nipple. That's what it really was. Oh, just one nipple, though. Not both. <laughs> no, I want Jeremy's heart doing Not a four a forty pound Murph in like the most hot and humid North Carolina was, weather ever. It's one hundred and five degrees, end of May. He's out there with a forty pound vest. Just this was stopped. after. This was after I pretty much ran the entire Murph with Hunter, like filming on like my little stabilizer and like filming everybody haven't eaten anything and then it, it was a bet it was either if hunter breaks the record then i'll do 40 pound murph if he doesn't then i won't mm -hmm. but since i already said i was gonna do it I, I just did it anyways and the life drained from my body so fast just <laughs> ghost white in the face like 50 pounds of sweat just off my body, but we finished it. And I then, honestly. yeah, Jeremy was swimming ever since. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, gosh. Okay. So then, like, so then you knew he's a workhorse, right? So, hey, go run off a bridge with this weight. Hey, go take this kettlebell to do that. Like, you know that's going to be someone who's, like, ready to be coached or ready to do the work. Or you're just like, I just like this person because he's an idiot. <laughs> Yeah, kidding. I mean, it was, it was interesting. It was more so one of those things, like, I had kind of known Hunter because I was at the gym working for the gym. I was the head, like, one of the head programmers of the gym that he had done the event at. Mm -hmm. So we had been communicating with Hunter and whatnot, and, and so I knew Hunter, but then it was like when Nick showed up, like, we just clicked as, like, cool people. And so it was like, I think shortly after that, like, we hung out, like, for the first time, and it was just one of those things, like, and hey, try this workout, like, do this, and and he came from such a running background, but he couldn't clean 205. Um, and so it was like, well, I was like, hey, let's just. <laughs> he still can't. It was, yeah. It's just uh, <laughs> yeah, and so it was kind of like a blend of like, hey, let's, let's uh, we became really good friends. And then it was like, hey, I'll just, I'll coach you for free type thing. Like, I'll just, I'll help you out. Um, and yeah. Kind I, of off, I offered to pay. I was like, hey. Johnny and Penny is like. I'll show you the out. other nip if you coach me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just it was one of those things like it just wasn't about the money thing for me, and so I was like, "Hey, let me just coach you out. Like, let me help you out." And like, you, I know you can work hard, and you're a cool person. So then we just kept hanging out from there, and it kind of like the yeah. friendship group. Then we're That's going right. to concerts together. We're doing all this type of stuff yeah. with our buddies. So I. Love that first sight, exactly. Uh, you know, I I started coaching like eight years ago or so. Um, you know, I was kind of in the I was in the military, so I there's a huge gap that I saw with like military the way the military treats fitness and health, and that's kind of where that journey started and, and started the performance driven life kick. And it was just like I said, it started kind of like a tactical athlete thing. Um, and then as it just kind of grew, obviously the scope of it grew a bunch. And then, um, you know, throughout the time, obviously then met Nick, like you said, four years ago or so. And, and uh, yeah, we just kind of keep growing. So when I started programming for him, it just kept growing. And it was like one of those things. Then you know, Nick, has a, well, I'm sure we'll get into it. Nick had like a pretty cool media gig where he was like full time doing photography and video. And uh, it, kind of grew rapidly and we were both growing at like such a cool pace so it was cool to like kind of have that journey happen together um and then we just i mean we started talking about the idea of releasing the app like a long time ago and uh, mm -hmm. kind of pulled the trigger one day we we're like we're gonna yeah 
And it's a, I mean, I think a lot of people think that they got to wait for like the perfect time to do something. And then it's like, you just got to do it. Yeah. Yeah, that was us. Like, what's funny is like, once we put the trigger on it, we actually, we did it through this other meeting and then it just didn't, it wasn't the vision we had. We were like, this is not what we want. And then like, the, it took us eight months probably to pull the trigger to do it. And within three days, we switched like to two different companies, like <laughs> on the phone, like, and then we launched it. And it was like, why really? did I do that? <laughs> yeah. That was funny. That was funny. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting um, when you don't have, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 or more to make your own app, right? Like, yeah. oh, more than that, you need like at least a hundred thousand i feel like they have like a solid functioning app with like all these different features and it's outrageous yeah it's kind of silly and i think but at the, at the same time like platform fees are not they're pretty fucking silly. exactly there's <laughs> one thing for every platform <laughs> but that's pretty awesome what do you feel like are some of the differences between so before I get to that question, who is like your main target demographic? Who's that, who makes up the bulk of your clientele? Who do you guys like to work with? Like what, talk to me about that. Yeah, I think it's kind of twofold because like there's that subscription, the stay beefy and the stay lean stuff that we have. And, and then we have the individual coaching and the, the stay beefy and stay lean. What we really tried to get after with our target demographic are those individuals that are looking to get better, but needed just a smarter way to train. Like I confirm, I truly think there's just a lot of missing gaps on how people program and, and what people can be doing better without having to spend three hours in the gym doing some like crazy high level program. Um, so, you know, our, our, the demographic that we kind of hone in on is that like, Hey, I have 60 minutes. Like what do I need to do to keep it fun, keep progress, like injury free, um, and, and really kind of get after my goal still and in, in a fun way and be a part of the community. And then you know, on the individual side, it's a little bit more opened up because, you know, we deal with everybody. Like we have like triathletes to tactical athletes, to CrossFit athletes, just kind of a little bit more individualized, obviously. So the scope is different, but, you know, same kind of thing. It's that person that doesn't really know what to do, which is best. And then like, Hey, let's get you on structure and move forward. from there. Yeah. Gotcha. So do you think that, what would you tell someone who has been looking at your programming or thinking about doing it or being like, oh, I've been following Nick forever. I love his stuff, man. I wish I could be like Nick. Like what, yeah. what do you feel like people walk through in their head? Do you think that they try to wait for the perfect time to get into coaching? Do they think that like something happens or do you think it's more so just like send it, throw some shit at the wall, see what happens, get in training, put in your best effort. Yeah, I would I think say that that would, uh, Go ahead, Nick. Go. Oh, I was just going to say, I think one of the main things is that people think that they need to get in shape or like train more before they hop into this program. Um, There's also like a overwhelming, like we get a lot of the, I'm getting frustrated by like not seeing results with the current program. Like I'm on and like, we'll get people that jump in like, wow, my body feels great. Like it freshens up a little bit. Um, that's what we've seen majority of. The mm -hmm. people that like make the decision like oh i hesitated because I, like i wasn't sure and then then they get like two weeks three weeks into the program they're like wow it's not normal for my knees to hurt all the time <laughs> like or like wow i felt great even though i worked hard still and it's like that's the whole goal so you know that problem i would say that we see a lot of is just people that i think everyone knows the person in the crossfit gym that like has been there for two years and they haven't gotten better but they're the first one to like lay on the ground and like sweat super hard it's like <laughs> do you like sweating super hard do you like getting better like what's your choice <laughs> like, yeah. yeah yeah i think that's a pretty common thing right and it's like what what also happens outside of those 20 20 or that hour in the gym right so the 23 hours of the day that we always talk about as trainers like sleep recovery stress did you eat anything did you show up to the gym and you're yawning because you didn't eat anything <laughs> like yeah. are you dehydrated you know and so how do you guys i mean nick i know you're super active in the app and like really providing like a lot of that support and accountability and motivation and like having those really tough conversations i mean jeremy you as well but like how do you guys approach the rest of the day within your coaching community to help people you know elevate their lifestyle as well as their training 
You want to take this one, Jamie? Yeah, I mean, we, we <laughs> offer, like, weekly Zoom calls. So mm-hmm. the whole goal for us starting it was there was just – like when we got together, it was like, hey, how do we help as many people as possible? Like I love doing individual coaching. At one point, I was up to 60 or 70 clients at the time. And like I just had no outside life. Mm-hmm. And I still love doing individual stuff, but it was okay. Well, now how do we like get that to the masses? And so what we tried to do is within the community still give like an individual feel behind things, behind things. And what we do, yeah, we're active in the chats and we're active on the leaderboard and whatnot, but even more so like we get on zoom call with people so i would say like majority of our most active members get into a zoom call where i give them 40 minutes like tell me about your training tell me about any questions you have and i'll give them almost as if it's a one-on-one call right and we've had some of those calls where there's a lot of people on them you know maybe i'm just touching people one-on-one and then there's other times where like two people get on and, like you guys are essentially getting a one-on-one call with me like we're all mm-hmm. giving you anything need to know so um you know and there, there, there's some readiness metrics in the app that are pretty cool um you know we're, we're utilizing train heroic and, and josh over at train heroic's just done a phenomenal job with kind of setting us up there so like the readiness metrics and all that are done through the app so we can yeah. pick and see and and i think what's cool is both nick and i really do the program mm-hmm. but we're ahead of it so, you know, while every individual is different on how they recover outside of the gym and, and their tolerance to training, um, I can kind of tell, like, when I'm starting to feel a little bit and I know, like, I'm pretty squared away on that stuff. And then Nick will text me, like, yeah, I'm kind of feeling it. I know Nick's results. Then it's like, okay, we can start to taper or deload off before the group even gets to that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's good to I, I kind of giggle at people who don't test their workouts. You know what I mean? Where it's just like, oh, we just threw this at Tim and Tim died. <laughs> and uh, it's been tough. <laughs> happens next class? Like, like yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, cool if it works for you, but I'm not trying to knock it. I just have always yeah. kind of been like, you know, practice what you preach and, and really put yourself in their position so that you can honestly like connect to the person, connect to the client, right? Mm-hmm. So it's just like, yeah, here's the leaderboard get on it you know yeah and i and, and i think of programming kind of like an art like it is a form of art and like how it flows from the time you walk into the gym and how you leave the gym like how you're feeling throughout it it's to me that's how i look at it. it's like a, a, a cinematic art thing where it's like your experience and so the majority of the time that's why i like us doing them it's because like hey like how did you feel did you walk out of the gym feeling accomplished like sure you're gonna be tired and, and work but I can close my eyes and give you some random exercises. They're going to make you really tired, but you might be in there for two hours. You might like not realize you're doing a bunch of shoulder work, like whatever it may be. And so that's, I think it's just super important to do. Yeah. It also allows us to connect to our members a lot more. You know, I think last week we all had a really tough workout and I was like, all right, this one's going to suck, but we're all in this together. Like, <clears throat> And so it was yeah. just really cool, like engaging in the community and everybody like kind of coming together through like the suck and, you know, it's a good time. It's time oh, to yeah. make, that mistake. I make mistakes yeah. like that. Like, cause I, yeah. like, I would say I'm a pretty fit individual. I've competed in, in the past. And, You're not. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I'm just kidding. So, <laughs> and so it's like, like I'll do some stuff and then I'm like, oh man, like, did I go too far on that one? <laughs> like, like, especially if I don't add like, a time cap, like sometimes they'll be like, oh, that was a little, that was a little aggressive. That's fair. Yeah. It's because you don't have the beard anymore. Bring the beard back. Bring it back. It's such a dirty beard. I, I get the, I get the Andrew Luck beard, if you know what I mean? Like all yeah, down my neck. neck beard. Like, I look like I should be like chopping wood in the middle of the wood by myself in Montana. That's fair. Where are you based? <laughs> Uh, I'm currently just outside of San Antonio, Texas. Cool. So, okay. And, and Nick, you're in Southern California, right? Sorry, cool. Jeremy. Yeah, I'm Newport Beach. Sorry. What were you saying, Jeremy? I grew, up, I grew up next to Nick. So I grew up next to Nick and then moved around with the military quite a bit, and, and now I'm in Texas. So you're that California person who moved to Texas. <laughs> Pretty much. The experts. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um <laughs> Well, what do you guys do outside of the gym? I mean, I know I know you guys work a ton. I know you train quite a bit, but not too much. 
Um, what happens outside? What What are some of those passions? I mean, Nick, you're in media. Jeremy, you've been in the military. Like, what's what's going on? I am a business junkie. I I have a couple different businesses, like a serial entrepreneur stuff. So um, I work because of the challenge. Like I so I work a lot, and then if I'm not working, I travel a bunch. Um, I play a lot of golf, like especially you know when I live in North Carolina, I live near Pinehurst, so it's pretty pretty easy to golf. But uh, you know now it's kind of what my activity is in the summer when I can get out there in the sunset. But um, a lot of it for me right now is just travel and business. I try and do that as much as possible and just kind of see some cool stuff. Nice. Did you watch the Liverpool tournament? Are you like a golf watcher? No, no. I, like, I don't watch. I don't watch the only as it is. Like I don't watch TV besides Suits right now. It's a little addictive, but uh, I don't watch like sports a bunch. I'll watch the Steelers because I love the Steelers, but um, I'm just a Steelers fan. Steelers yeah. fan too? I'm not, no. <laughs> but Jeremy is. It's always fun to talk about does, him. Nick doesn't guys. watch sports ball. He doesn't watch sports ball at all. He, he doesn't believe in sports. No. I don't really care. No. That's fair. How, how long do you train, Nick? How long do I train? Is it kind of like you train like a normal amount and then like it just takes three hours because you film things or? Oh, it... <laughs> wait, wait, you uh, couldn't see my butt in this angle. <laughs> I got to lower it a little bit, angle it this way. <laughs> no, I mean, my training is roughly like an hour, hour and a half tops. Um, I've become pretty efficient at knowing how to film all the stuff. But yeah, I'd say like, yeah, hour, hour and a half on a long day. Um, and that's most days. And then, yeah, filming takes me maybe a little bit longer, just kind of getting everything set up so we have some stuff to kind of push out. Um, but yeah. Have you always kind of been a funny guy, like the funny guy? Uh, I've always been like a kind of sarcastic guy. Um, I don't know if I'd call myself funny, but I like to have a good time, keep it light. Uh. <laughs> Not, it's very hard to get in the same room when someone is serious because we just like, we don't understand them. Like, <laughs> Yeah, we're just gonna have a good time, you know. You're <laughs> you're awkward that you're mad right now. Like, let's just go get pizza. I'm just gonna laugh at this. Yeah. <laughs> you're like over in the corner. Your face sucks. <laughs> That's fair. Like, what do you do outside of the gym? Uh, so when I'm not training, um, I'm trying to grow my media business. Um, so I specialize in doing like short form content for brands and companies and whatnot. And I do a lot of freelance work here in the Newport beach area as well. Um, so that takes up a good amount of my time. But other than that, I just like to get outside. So I got recently got like in one of those electric bikes, a little thumb throttle. And so this is, it, it is stupid fun. Um, just taking that out to get some sunshine down the boardwalk, down to the beach. Um, when my bike's not broken, I like to go mountain biking. Um, just good mountain biking out here. Um, but yeah, then I like to take the camera out. I begin into like some surfing photography uh, down here at the wedge and anywhere on the beach here. Um, so yeah, just, just like getting inside. I like to travel, um, love taking photos. Um, yeah, that's what I like to do in my in my free time. That's right. Did you go to school for photography or like videography or did you go to like self-taught or? No, so I actually got my undergraduate in economics and that's a, a story oh. in itself. But uh, yeah, when I wanted good. to get into, yeah, I initially wanted to get into like graphic design and then the school I was going to first didn't have that program. Uh, so shifted towards business and then I had a little too much fun and I didn't get into the business school. And so like, <clears throat> I feel like that's an accomplishment within itself. I feel like it's pretty hard to not get in the business school. Actually, it was very hard to get in. No, I'm just kidding. It probably <laughs> wasn't, but I found a way not to. Depends on um, me. Exactly. And then, um, so anyways, like the one closest to it was economics with like how my courses lined up and whatnot in classes. And so kind of fell into that. And, you know, I actually really enjoyed it. Um, I feel like you learn a lot more about business and economics than you do in some of the business. Um, uh, so, yeah. Go wow. Okay, so how did you biff up business school? Like, how did you fuck that up? Uh, let's see. So, I started out 
going to a smaller school up in Oregon, Linfield, played football there for two years. Um, and then when I transferred to a, the JC, I went to Cuesta. It's right there in San Luis Obispo, right next to Cal Poly. My, That's right. My, That's dream, <laughs> my dream was to get into Cal Poly. Uh, no way <laughs> Yeah. So many cinnamon rolls from Pismo, and you know what? <laughs> the best place on earth. I absolutely love that area. Um, and so when I got there, I'll, most of my classes didn't transfer over just because of how they were structured at this private school I was going to. And so I had to retake, like, almost everything. And so it was, like, a year and a half. Um, but the good thing was, like, I knew most of it. So I didn't really have to study that hard. So I got to party a lot. Um, but then, yeah, when I got to Sac State, I just didn't have the GPA and the business program was uh, very impacted. There's a ton of people going in there. And I think if I would have waited another semester, I would have definitely gotten in. But I was just like on the clock. I wanted to get out. Um, so I made the switch to economics and I was out within the next year. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed economics. Um, learned a lot. Forgot most of it. Um, I knew it was. I learned like it was not a career that I wanted, um, but I got the degree. It opened a lot of doors in the future. Um, I learned a lot. That's fair. Okay, so you're a you're a sex state horny. Yeah. Stingers up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Jeremy, did you what go to school for you? What were you gonna say? I just said, "What a mod up, stingers!" <laughs> it's a little baby stinger. I don't get it. <laughs> um, Jeremy, did you go to school? Or were you in the military mainly, or what's kind of your background here? Yeah, so I I start. I mean, I was one of those kids. I was pretty good at football in in high school, and didn't really take grades too seriously. So I kind of rolled right into the military, but then got my life together. Um, I went to a, like a subsidiary school outside of North Carolina, like a Campbell University. It's a small school in North Carolina. Uh, I got my degree in physiology. It was it was interesting because I always had this passion about <laughs> fitness, right? And so I joined the military. I wrapped up in some cool um, high end units that were doing way advanced stuff, and and I had access to like a lot of the newest research that was happening. So by the time I kind of got to my junior senior year. And a lot of these physiology courses, they were teaching, in my opinion, like outdated information. And so I got my degree in physiology. It was probably one of the easiest things just because I was so passionate about it that, like, I just heard what they were saying. Like, cool, I got it. And then I would be the, the asshole that would, like, argue with the instructor. It's like, oh, well, this is actually, like, the newest stuff says. And it was just it was a fun time. Um, yeah, I got my degree in physiology, just kind of knew it was my passion, knew what I wanted to do, knew what I would understand really well. And it was pretty cool because at the time I was already coaching. And so it was like, I would go learn something and like immediately apply it to like some of my first athletes and just kind of see how it uh, panned out. And um, ever since then, just been like a, a lifelong student of coaching and nutrition and fitness. And that's just how that kept developing. That's pretty awesome. What do you think is like the difference between uh, let's go like functional fitness, CrossFit, training for military, training for like, I know you guys do a lot of different things as far as your clientele. So what do you feel yeah. like are some things that you've taken from those past experiences being like, <laughs> like the military and applying them to like daily life and civilian life and helping mm -hmm. people with that? Yeah, I think, the, the common denominator between all of them is like we mentioned earlier, like what happens outside of the gym is far more um, important, right? Like how well can you recover? How well can you take the lifestyle things that we recommend and put into practice and, and be able to perform at a high level? <clears throat> what makes each thing a little different, it's interesting, like tactical athletes, we have to be able to perform at our highest level, but still think really, really critically and make like life changing decisions rapidly. So setting up someone for success to be able to endure long physical activity, but still have the mental acuity to make sharp decisions. Like that's kind of always been our goal there. 
And then when you get into like the CrossFit space, it's a little interesting because as long as, as much as it's an unknown task, like we kind of know there's some things that you have to be able to do and there's always something to work towards and, um, you know, and everyone has different weaknesses, strength, endurance, aerobic capacity, whatever it may be. Um, so, you know, the, the difference is more so one, there's obviously like the modality, like how is it that you're working out for like a specificity of what you're doing? Um, but outside of that, it really comes down to, you know, do you have the other things in deck to be able to do the tasks that you have to do? And, you know, I still think one of the coolest things I have is I have this like 60 year old client who he just calls me every month. He's like, my only goal this month is to do seven double black diamond mountains down in Utah. I'm like, cool. Like, let's do it. And he understands even at that at that age, like, hey, we need to recover. We need to, like, make sure our body's, like, feeling okay to be able to do that. And, you know, one of his coolest accomplishments was beating his sons down the mountain. And it's, like, it gives me a good feeling. But, um, oh, yeah. really, like, the big difference between all of them is training the specificity of what you're doing and just making it a, a repeatable process and growing. Yeah, absolutely. I think that makes sense. Nick, do you have anything to add to that? No, I think Jeremy hit that on the button. Cool. I, I like to some... nerd out a lot. Yeah. <laughs> we <laughs> like to nerd. Was on Zoom calls, like someone will ask like a sweet question, like, "Hey, man, like, what do you think about creatine?" And then like I'll catch myself <laughs> oh. into like thirty minute answer, and I'm like, "Wait, he just asked like, what is creatine?" <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So the flash of lipid barrier. Um, is yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Jeremy is a genius at all this stuff, so I just let him. <laughs> and I'm learning a lot. So you're like, it makes my mustache grow thicker, and it's good for me. It's yeah. I, I'm I'm a, I love being a lifetime learner. I have I think one of the best mentors in the game. So um, I just constantly learn. And I'm a geek about it. if I can do anything and just like only do this. That's mm -hmm. what I would do like all day long. Um, it'd just be a huge thing for me. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty amazing. Like when you start to when you recognize that it is a lifelong learning process and like a continuum, then it's like, it's endless. There's no stopping. There's no A to B. There's no like, let's do this and that. It's just like, what is next? What's the most efficient thing next and building upon that foundation. And I think that's like a, before we get into your question, Anna, um, that's a, a pretty common thing, like to watch that shift in people's mindset and coaching and like how everyone hears that a little bit differently. And then it clicks and then you're like, yes, now we can make some results. Now we can make some shit happen. Like anyone can follow a program. Anyone can like more or less show up, but then it's like you begin to like connect to it and apply yourself to that and really be like, yes, this is the foundation for the rest of my life. So that I and can. Yeah. It's super interesting you say that because that's what we try to preach with the individual and the app subscription that we have. It's like, we are not the company that's going to get you 30 days, 45 days results. Like we are looking like, Hey, how do we create long-term sustainability with our training and our feeling? Like I, anyone can go use a nutrition calculator and give you a program or a nutrition plan. That's going to make you lose five pounds a week in, the, in four weeks. You'll, you'll drop weight. Mm -hmm. but what happens after that? Like when you're tired of starving yourself, you hate the food. So like, we like to just kind of add this plan in of like, hey, here's the foundations that we're going to build that before you like even blink your eyes, like you'll realize five months in and now you have like super hardcore habits that you just love to do. And it makes sustainable change um, for the long term. It's the same philosophy we kind of have with our training. It's like, mm -hmm. like if you want to like get better super quickly, like maybe we're not the coach for you because I don't believe in just injuring people. I could make you better. But if you're not recovering on point, you're not ready for that kind of intensity or volume, you're just going to get injured. And you're kind of screwing yourself. So, but mm -hmm. if you look at, Nick, for example, you know, he came from runner's background. It was like, hey, let's just take two years to get stronger. That's all we did was just straight up strength. And then it got to a point where he went from, I think he was leaning like 245 when I met him. And then it was like, oh, yeah, fine, yeah. three, like 335, 345. <laughs> It's like, hey, okay, now we can have fun and do other things because a, a bad day for you is a three fifteen. Like, we'll go from there. Yeah, yeah, I remember those days. 
I remember 300 was like the biggest deal. I was out with Jeremy and we celebrated hard once I finally hit that. And then I want to say like a week or two later, we hit like 315. But <clears throat> it's been a very like slow, but like very steady progress. Um, and before, you know, when we were doing like a lot of the weightlifting stuff, kind of before I started working with Jeremy and you know, I was trying to get strong fast and I was always blowing out my back um, and my hips and my quads were having a lot of issues as well. And then started working with Jeremy, started doing a little bit more mobility, but I've been for the most part injury free, but I've still seen gradual results in not only my lifts, but you know, we always retest workouts to see, pro see the progression in there and times continue to go down. Um, so everything indicates that we're doing something right. Yeah, for sure. A bad day at 3.15. I know. I wish I had that problem too, Brandon. <laughs> You're not the only one. <laughs> we, hit some big, we hit some big numbers around here. <laughs> we got to maintain the lifestyle being beefy. Yeah. But that's kind of the thing. I mean, like, you you stay beefy, right? Like, you, you stay lean. Like, stay is an important part of that program, right? And, like, the sustainability. Yeah. And it's like, you know, get jacked, stay jacked. And – I think that, you know, a lot of people look at social media, Nick, I think you probably get this all the time too. And um, it's, it's like, Oh, well, how can I look like you? And it's like, give me two years, give me five years. Yeah. Start I'm now. Saying, I'm <laughs> so glad you said that because people always come up to me, especially when they find out I like, coach and like, what do I got to do to look like you? And I'm like, understand that for 12 years, I have not had a day, a week off from the gym a week off where I ate like an asshole. Like, that's always my favorite saying. It's like, oh, how do I get leaner? Stop eating like an asshole. Like, mm -hmm. and you know what that means to you personally. Like some people are a little bit more extreme than others, but we all know the bad decisions we make. So it's like, are you willing to, for 12 years, not like, and that's why it allows me to, people will see me eat cookies or brownies, whatever it may be. And it's like, but I have such a foundation of muscle, right? Like look at like Marcus Billy, the leanest guy on the planet. Like, but he's been working out for 20 something you know, like, and he's so his muscle foundation so there that it's like yeah you can get away with doing some stuff but you gotta have the foundation yeah and it's like that question of like where did your fitness journey start and i never want to make somebody feel bad about it right but then when i tell them the truth it's like i started front squatting when i was in seventh grade my parents had weights when I was in fourth grade. We always lifted. I was the weird kid who did push-ups at Thanksgiving. And people fucking hate that. And they're like, well, fuck you, bitch. And I'm like, well, start today then because today is better than tomorrow. You know what I mean? And it's like, that's really aggressive. But, I mean, it's kind of one of those things <laughs> want to hear they mm. don't they don't want to hear stop eating like an asshole they don't want to hear hey you got to put in the work you got to show up you can't just sit in your car and have anxiety and a panic attack while the weights are inside right like you can't keep well you can but it's not ideal to continue to overrule your body when we say eating like an asshole it's not like oh you ate 12 cupcakes no it's like you ate 12 cupcakes and felt like shit and kept eating the 12 cupcakes yeah. what the yeah. problem is Right, <laughs> like yeah, like yeah. you, you just gotta start, like start exactly. People, people go, they don't want to, they will jump right into like a sixty minute workout, and it's like, hey, go do something for 20, 30 minutes. Twenty minutes. How will you feel good about yourself? Like one of the biggest things I see people that fail and they come to me and work like more so on the individual side mm -hmm. is they go in and some like they went to Gold's gym or something, some stupid gym that. Like the program just wasn't for them, and it was because they had some dude in there, like or or woman, like program for them, like forty sets in a session. And they got so sore they couldn't even walk out of the gym. It's like if someone already has gym anxiety, what is that going to do to them when the next morning they can't even step out of bed, like because mm -hmm. they're so sore? Like let's take an approach where it makes sustainable progress and just get you in the right habits, and then. God, it's, it's, it's so crazy to me that people don't understand that. And they just give people blanket programs that here's what you should do. And it's like, okay, but it's not like everybody's yeah. different. Totally. And then like on the client side, right? Like setting those expectations that like, okay, I know social media and like all the diet culture and the media messaging tells you to go all in. It tells you to do that 60 minute workout. Like there's a lot of so Nick, you said 20 minutes. There's a lot to be excited about for a hard 20 minute workout. You know, like I'd much rather have that rather than like a 60 minute, like, oh, I, I moved. It took me an hour and a half. Like, 
I did yeah. all the movements. The intensity, you know, the little intensity score in your app, it was a two. It wasn't that hard. You're like, that workout yeah. should have crushed your soul. <laughs> and yeah. you didn't do one movement with proper intensity, right? Yeah. Moving with intention. There we go. And people, people think like, so I did a little theory <laughs> after quarterfinals this year. I, I barely missed my finals and I just was super busy with work. I knew I wasn't where I needed to be. And, uh, for the next couple of months, I was super busy with work and, and all that. And I ended up doing that for like three or four months. And like just recently, like this is not like boasting. It's just like I, I squatted the most of the fronts in my life. Like I yard my power clean, but it was like a proper dose for what I was doing for what my body could handle. And it was like efficient. And I was able to go in and actually work out hard versus like I knew if I had an hour and a half, two hour session, like I wouldn't be able to do anything like that. Mm-hmm. And so it's just it takes oh, a lot of people on off. but every time i think i'm getting close to like catching jeremy's fitness and like his strength like i'm right there my numbers are getting there he just comes back and like front squats like 425 and then power cleans 375 and i'm just he's only working out 30 minutes a freaking day most days and <laughs> guess but what it's like, i don't know that's efficiency right and yeah. that's like that's also years and that's like he has five more 10 more years you know i don't know what it is but it's like might have that or might genetically have this right and so it's also to like understanding your where you're at what's exactly well like we're gonna look in the mirror today and we are going to look at ourselves (laughs) we're not gonna look at nick we're gonna gonna look at jeremy you know what i mean and it's cool to have that kind of competition right but then there's an aspect of like hey you in the mirror. We're gonna do this because you're not good at that, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a he- it's a healthy competition. I don't get down on myself and pissed off and want to get further faster, but I do see it as like a goal to that I can attain if I just keep on the progression. Um, and I think that's a big thing with our community too. It's like seeing people put in their scores and their times, and then trying to maybe get a little bit better than the person that maybe just got him a little bit in this workout. You know, sometimes I get beat in these workouts. I'm like, mm, I don't know about that, but all right, we got to go a little bit harder. Uh, um, so it's good, healthy competition too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's needed. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so for our viewers, you guys can see this comment, but for our audio listeners, uh, we have a comment here that, the love that we mentioned anxiety, um, gym anxiety, which is a big one, especially for athletes and competitors who fell off or had to take time off previously, who are coming into the gym and comparing themselves to their prior performance. Um, I see this happen a lot in our like in our CrossFit athletes. Uh, I see it happen a lot too in that forty-five year old. Like I used to be fit, and then life hit me in the face for the last ten years, you know. And or competitors in bodybuilding, you know. How do you guys handle? That type of expectation, that type of like mindset shift from, oh, I used to have 80 pack abs and now I don't feel like I can do a squat. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think a lot of that anxiety happens, you know, on more on the individual side because you do get that individual. It's like still has the goals, you know, Um, but I think it's all about setting like goals. Like it comes down to like, what are you looking for out of your fitness right now? And if you don't have that answer, then you're always going to compare yourself to your best. Like you're always going to compare yourself to when you're most fit, like crushing it, always utilize like, you know, Oh, well I was doing this and I qualified for this, or I was at this body fat percentage and, and that's what I looked like. And it's like, well, the reality is right now you're not. So like, is your goal to get back to there? Then understand if you're in a place in your life where you can add in the, the, the recovery tools, the lifestyle that you had like back then. Right. And it's like, or you have kids, you start a new job, whatever it may be now to where this is the amount of recovery that I can add towards my fitness regimen. And then like, you know, so maybe my goal is a little bit off that, but setting the goal and being able to get to a realistic point is where it's going to be much better. And it's going to help you. That's a big one too. I think with having kids, I can't speak to it. I never speak to it. Cause I'm like, I don't know. Um, but at the same time, the <laughs> right. I have a cat and I yell at the cat and I'm like, I don't need to yell at the whole thing human. But uh, anyways, <laughs> um, the point I guess I'm getting at is that I don't have anger issues. Um, no, but <laughs> having 
kids. I mean, that's a really big one too. Is like your body's completely different, right? Or your lifestyle is mm-hmm. completely different. Maybe on the man's, the male side, right? So women physiologically, lifestyle wise, men lifestyle, mental, like whole ass thing, right? And I think that's really too where your guys' community comes in really handy because a lot of people don't maybe have that in their life. Or, or we'll go with this idea that they don't have people who are maybe fitness or health oriented in their life. And so they have yeah. that community with you guys. And that's a really unique offering that you guys have. Yeah, for sure. Um, kind of not to go backwards, but um, talking, I guess, military, uh, reintegrating it into like civilian life, um, getting people like how important do you feel like is working out and integrating that to someone maybe who has never had it in a formal sense who, you know, maybe want, want to do competitive things, but, you know, thinks they go to the gyms that they don't need a coach. Like where, where do you feel like reintegrating into society from the military side of things? Does fitness play a role? Oh, that's a good one. I think, I think adding in structure, right? Like the military is all about structure. You wake up at a certain time, you work out for a certain time, you go back to work at a certain time. It's like everything is so structured. And so if you get out of the, like when you get out of the military, that's taken away from you. You no longer have like task and purpose of, of you know, why do you want to work out? Like you know, in the military, you have to score a certain thing on your PT score or whatever it may be. But, you know, when you get into the civilian life and you let's say you work for Amazon, no one's telling you, hey, man, you got to run two miles, three miles at a certain pace. <laughs> like, and so mm-hmm. you rather have it in, or you don't. And that's, you know, I've seen people get out and they just kind of, um, you know, gain a bunch of weight. Or I see people get out and struggle with the, hey, where's my structure at? And I think, you know, and I'll tell like individual athletes that have never been in the military this and people in their, in their community where it's like you need to create a structure that makes you successful. Mm-hmm. Right. My structure is going to look different from Nick's. Nick's is going to look different from our members, like creating a structure that allows you to set your non-negotiable parts. Like our, we try to preach like your non-negotiable, it should, like, it should be health or fitness, related. no matter what it is. You want to do yoga, you want to do Pilates, whatever it may be, but having a non-negotiable that is set for you and like your boundary allows you to commit yourself to that. And instead of it just being like a thing you do, and I work out, it's like, well, no, it's a lot different when it's a non-negotiable for you. Like you have to do it even for 15, 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, just gonna... Reintegrating it is like, like make it a part of your life in a way where for how many years you spent in the military, it was part of your life because it was forced. Now, obviously it's a choice, but um, you know, find something that's enjoyable to you and make it a non-negotiable. Mm-hmm. Totally. And a little bit of a tangent too. I mean, I think when you get pretty far into it and maybe you guys can relate to this, like it's not one of those things where you're like, I can't wait to work out today. Like, I mean, all the time it's kind of like, Oh, it's time to go work out. It's it's just a habit. Yeah. It's, it's not. And that sounds so weird. I think to, I want to say that in the right light, you know, but it's the the newness of it, like the Christmas like, oh, it's Christmas morning, I get to work out. It just kind of turns into like, I'm going to the gym. Like, yeah. yeah. And it's, I mean, that's where having a plan, like having a fallback comes in really handy that I think people overlook. It's like, oh, yeah, I've gotten to a point where like, this is my thing and that's what I'm doing. But how much more enjoyable or how much more immersive or efficient could you be if you just followed, mm-hmm. if you just followed something, you know? Yeah. Exactly. And a lot of the, the highest level athletes that I've dealt with, you know, a lot of times they stick with me because it's like, dude, it's so nice just going to the gym and like not have to worry about making my own thing up. Like, like if you just go into the gym, you pull up your phone, like, oh, here's what I'm supposed to do. And then you like, you get on with it and you go home and really that's you know, based off your goals. If it's 20 minutes or an hour and a half, it's like same thing. You don't have to think about it. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, so there is that aspect of it where hey, having a plan, allowing you to make progress and knowing that someone else has your best interest in mind. We're all trying to get more in better shape and, and healthier. Yeah. So, yeah, I think I can speak for a lot of people, too. So, like, I'm not like a huge like I don't know much about like, you know, progressions and whatnot, the science behind it, why we're doing certain things. And it kind of took back to like when I was running and I was trying to, you know, get better at Spartan racing and the workouts. I was just kind of making up my own workouts, my own runs and whatnot. And it was just all over the place. It was very inefficient. 
and it wasn't until like I actually got like structure from somebody else I actually knew what they were doing where I started to see progress it started to become more fun um but and then also like it just takes like a lot of stress off of me because like I got a full-time job and whatnot and I don't need or I don't I have the time to like all right program for myself so it just takes a lot of the pressure off you the stress off you to try to figure out what to do for the day when you have somebody that actually knows what they're doing knows how to get you from a to b um and can present it in a fun effective efficient way yeah and you you touch on the fun thing and it's like that's when it starts to get exciting that's yeah, it's fun. oh well i gotta go to this thing because it's like part of my lifestyle but like oh i've been seeing progress in blank right like that's where it yeah. starts to get neat it's not just yeah. like I'm floundering and I'm out to sea and I'm here and working out and now I'm burnt out and now I'm going to eat a pizza and not go. <laughs> yeah, and that's what I love about our workouts too. It's, it's something different every single day. There's a new element, a new piece to our programming every single day. It's not the same old bench, squat, deadlift, accessory biceps, whatever. It's, you know, you're doing wall balls, you're climbing a rope. Like there's so many different variables like into our training where it's it's for me, it's always exciting because what new thing am I going to be doing today or what combination of movements are we going to be doing today to challenge myself and to test myself? Um, so yeah, having that variety definitely makes it very exciting. Um, and then also like when you see the progress and your PR and like a lot of these workouts, you're hitting your lifts like that also just is also very exciting. Totally. Yeah. And that's kind of where like sports, you know, like the, you start to get into companies within sports organizations, right? So, like CrossFit, it's a brand, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's not exactly. Hey, I'm so glad you said. <laughs> well, it is, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so, it's a lot of times people are like or Spartan, Spartan training. Spartan is a brand, but function. You mm -hmm. know, like we can all say yeah. all the things. Um, and it's like as trainers, we all have pet peeves. We all have things that we see in the industry or see within our cultures or see within our brands that are representing those. Industries. What do you feel like are some of the things that are going right or wrong within the functional fitness or like training communities that you guys work to resolve or that just bug the shit out of you like that you see on social media that you're just like, this is stupid. <laughs> like, what's happening there for you guys? We got time for another episode, or you just want me to <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna say that. I know, like the biggest one that like sums up. If at any moment you want to like stop me on a rant, mm -hmm. uh, is that right. like like fatigue and like sweating is not the sign of a good workout. Like you falling on the floor is not an indicator that you just like had a good workout. Mm -hmm. I think you know, like we like like the brand of CrossFit like didn't create anything new. They just structured things in a way where it was efficient for people. Um, mm -hmm. And so I just think that oftentimes what bothers me is when um, the barrier to entry is very low in terms of creating workouts and giving it to the masses. Mm -hmm. And when you get people that create workouts that like their goal is to make you tired or like fatigued with zero progress in mind. Like there's there's strength and conditioning principles that have been around for year, like a long time and are still foundationally true today. Like progressive overload, training variables that change, like all of these things are no different no matter what style you put them in. And the brand of CrossFit niche didn't create anything new. They just kind of structured it in a way that like people were able to receive it. Or kind of ahead of the wave of like, hey, I sign up, go to a class, I do an X exercise, and I leave. Um, and so that's one of my biggest pet peeves is when I see coaches or I don't want to say gym, but coaches that just don't really know and understand what they're doing, just give a workout because they know like, you know, I can give anyone, hey, go do a uh, 12 minute AMRAP, 50 double unders, uh, 50 dumbbell snatches max burpees in remaining of time and you're going to be tired and you're going to like suffer but it's like what did you really do like like what like what progress did you really make um and so that's just my biggest frustration you know when i see coaches trying to help someone kit better on their pull-ups but the individual can't do three strict pull-ups it's like where did the training philosophy and just basic physiology go like hey let's get a little stronger 
like to do some strict pull-ups before we just spend hours blowing a shoulder out and learning how to kick improperly. But it's kind of like the carrot on the stick. And Nick, you can relate to this too in social media. It's like, oh, well, I saw that butterflies look so cool. And it's just like, oh, I got to do them. And then your coach thinks like, or people in the gym will say, oh, yeah, you can the do The real pull oh. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> yes. But then it's We're like, love- go ahead. Sorry. No, I'm just oh. sorry. <laughs> I'm just saying that it's like the carrot on the stick is like it's shiny, it's new, it's a toy, it's this, it's mm. that, it's this. So you can do a butterfly pull up, you can totally do it. It looks like shit. You can't do it at all. Yeah. But you're happy of you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that kind of coaching is absolute dog shit. And it's just like stop that. Stop. Because yeah. it's not ultimately helping the person. They don't need to be a competitive athlete if they don't want mm. to. But they do need to be doing things safely. And like I think one of the things that goes wrong is that the the training mentality and like mentality of it is that you have to practice it as a coach you have to apply it and apply it and apply it like you said when you were in school or doing you know your your training jeremy is like you go to your client and you try it and you see if it works and then you see why it doesn't and then you refine it and that's a really overlooked i think aspect of like being a trainer being a fitness coach or i'm an influencer yeah. about programs like mm-hmm. We miss I think it's a really hard skill. I think it's a hard skill for people to say they don't know too. Like, you know, if if you don't know, then go learn. Or like, I, I always always believe like you should be able to write a program and then give like a detailed answer, not just like oh capacity and like use these buzzwords. Like a detailed answer. My bias is always going to be like a physiological answer. Like, hey, tell me why you're doing something. But a detailed answer as to why you're giving someone something. If you can't answer that, you don't know. Which is not the problem, but the problem is when you don't go take the time to know or learn from that. And, you know, it's just, it blows my mind that people don't see that. I think that's just how people get injured or, you know, they, they, because they're trusting someone they saw or, you know, the people that have a big following. And then you're like, you know what, with my following, I'm going to create a program, but I don't know what I'm doing. It's like, okay, (laughs) understand, like, people trust you with their health. And like health is wealth type thing, and it's like if you're mm-hmm. messing that up, you're kind of doing a disservice, in my opinion. Yeah, totally. And I mean, I think that's why we started partnering on the supplement side of things, right? Is because like, but first and foremost, like our philosophy here is like, I want you to know what you're taking, why you're taking it, long before it ever touches your mouth, before yeah. it ever goes in your body. You should know what you're putting in the body, <laughs> like a novel concept. <laughs> But it's really overlooked, right? Like anyone can make a supplement, sure. Anyone can, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But it's like, do you actually know what's in it? Do you know why? Do you know what it's going to do? What is the intended effect? And you don't need to be some like high level person to understand that, right? And that's the same training. And we're like, I think that we all agree and like have like this really cool synergy of like, know what's going on. Be an informed consumer. Be a participant in your life and your training and in your coaching and like Emma just said, like education leads to a confident application. That is huge, right? And so that's, that's, that's a good point because like yeah. that's something I always try and do is educate. Like my goals, like, you know, more so on the individual side, like almost like work myself out of the job. Like, hey, I'm going to give you some programming and then I hope just after a couple of years you stick with me because you like me. But you should be able to understand on your own. When we do like our nutrition challenges, our nutrition things within our community and whatnot, it's i'm not going to write like i don't write um meal plans i don't i get on calls and i teach you principles of nutrition to where then you know you're not the asshole that sits down at the dinner table with 12 of your friends and goes oh i can't have that because my coach says no it's Mm -hmm. more so like let me make an informed decision that allows me to live my life comfortably and what if it's a piece of cake like cool but you understand what you have to do the rest of the day in order to make an informed decision of like, Hey, I want to have cake. Like I did it yesterday. Like I, I made some cookies and it was like, I'm going to like lighten up my sugar intake that I normally have throughout the day. And like that way I can just have like a, you know, that 20% on the back end of my day that whatever, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nick, what does your nutrition look like? What do you eat? Beef? That's it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, just beef. Beef. No. Yeah. It's pretty much the same thing every day. I pretty much keep it clean, consistent, but I mean, I do like to go eat out. Um, you know, my breakfast is the same. I like two eggs and turkey bacon and either like toast, waffles, uh, or a bagel in the morning. 
because I just know that sits well on my stomach before I go work out. And then usually lunch and dinner, it's rice, maybe some vegetables if I'm feeling crazy uh, with either, yeah, some beef, chicken, steak, um, kind of whatever I've got today on the day. But yeah, it's relatively like the same and I'll snack around a little bit, but nothing crazy. But it's, it's just very kind of consistent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Progress is boring. I mean, it, it, <laughs> it fuels my body. I know how it affects my body and how I perform. And so I like to just keep it routine because mm-hmm. um, I just know how it's going to affect me and my performance. How do you guys handle the client who gets really bored of food? Oh, this food is so boring. My food's so boring. My food is, I get so bored. I have to eat something different every single day, every meal. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to stick to this. I, you can do that. Like, you can yeah. eat. Like, that's what's crazy. Like, people think eating healthy is just chicken and rice. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, you can have like different meals. Just how much time and effort do you want to put into it? Like, um, you know, I think, like, shoot, what I have yesterday? Like, Yesterday, I had like Brussels sprouts, zucchini, and like a, a chicken curry mix that I made. And it was like, I did, like, it's not just boring chicken and rice. It's like, you can kind of mix it around. And, you know, the, the basic thing that I always tell people if you're new to it, it's like, hey, go pick three meal or three meats, three different types of carbs, and then, you know, a veggie to cycle in and out. And you can, right there, you can mix and match 12 different styles of meals. And then you can use sauces mm-hmm. if you're not that good of a cook. Like, use sauces that spice it up to a different flavor but um you know for the most part like the the capabilities are endless but cut out the non-negotiables like there is just same thing with non-negotiables in your life there's non-negotiables in nutrition too like you know stop cooking cooking with butter like stop overloading with fried foods stop even eating preservatives like i'm a fan of cutting out like bread and, and gluten as much as you can like and it's one of those things where do those things it's pretty hard to make a bad meal like then it just comes out of what you like taste wise. But, um, yeah. you know, I always try and show shine light on like, Hey, here's how I've meal prepped in the past that didn't keep it as boring. Um, you know, but also the capabilities are endless. If you have the time and money, you can, you can make whatever you want. Um, and then think about it, like if you're structured to a point where, Hey, on the weekends, you know, you can go eat out or whatever, maybe and enjoy your life a little bit more. Mm-hmm. That's how you talk about yeah. Yeah, and I mean, like fitness, it's a, it's a, you got to build a foundation. Yeah, we got to make it simple. You know, it doesn't have to be chicken yeah. rice, but we got to make it simple. We got to make it attainable. We got to make it something that you can do when your day goes out the window and you still got to eat. Yep. You know what I mean, like a lot of people, my thing, I'm so damn busy. I don't want to make food, but I'm I know sorry. I got to eat. I know I got to prevent disease. I know I got to not wake up crazy sore tomorrow because I ate like an ass today. You know what I mean? And so it's like, what like are we going to do? It's like a, uh, like a, like I, similar to you, like very, very busy. And it's like, so for me, failing to prepare is preparing myself to fail. No, oh, like, for sure. If mm. I am not prepared, like I find myself eating out, then I'm behind, then I'm down a thousand calories. Now I'm snacking. Like it just goes down the wheels. It's like, I you know if I'm prepared pretty well, it's like, there's no issue. I can just throw my lunch in. I know at least at some point I have structured meals. Totally. Do you have yeah. a go-to like eat out like either of you? Yeah. Okay. I think Jeremy. I already know. Nick's is Tide Pool in Newport Beach. Love Tide Shout pools. out Tide Pool. Tide Pool. What is Tide it? Pool. It's a family-owned and operated little uh, pizza deli right down the street. Uh, so I met the owner Troy and his mom Kelly, and they're just the coolest, sweetest people. They have some amazing food, pizzas and sandwiches. Mm -hmm. Uh, they do like this cauliflower buffalo, like this, um, yeah, fried cauliflower with like buffalo sauce. Uh, their Brussels sprouts are amazing, but just great people. The type, like you walk in there and like the place is packed, but Troy knows, like the owner, Troy knows everybody by their first name. He's talking to everybody. He knows their little baby's name. So he's like holding them, like playing with them. And then his mom's just like talking to everybody, knows everything about their life. It's just the coolest spot and the food is amazing. Um, so I like to go there. Just great place. I, yeah, it's pretty good. I've been there. I'm a like around here. There's a pokey spot that I go to. Like I'm one of those weirdos. Like I've been eating healthy for so long that like my taste buds genuinely just don't like like bad food. And so mm-hmm. it's like for me, like eating out like cheat meals is still like pretty healthy food. So like, I'll just go get a bunch of pokey and like um, 
and eat it up and or like a really good burger i could smash a good burger <laughs> james a big burger guy oh i'm a yeah, big, big guy. Big. yeah I'm right i also got a look i have a smoker too and i'll challenge anybody to the best steak you've ever had so it's hard Remember for me we're going to san antonio and uh <laughs> 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 hear me? yeah exactly I've never gotten so much shit for eating a hamburger than with by Jeremy. Really? Jeremy has, Jeremy has rules to eating a hamburger. Oh, <laughs> what are these rules? Are we gonna fight? You don't cut it. You don't cut a burger in half. Period. One, you don't cut it in half. Two, not one cut. You cut it in half. What about fourths? Is that like the ultimate? Like, I mean, that's, that's like then you just that's okay. a sandwich. It's not even a burger. That's a sandwich. <laughs> that's a sandwich. For a toddler. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's a W method. So you hold the, the burger at the bottom with your thumb. Three fingers. And then you don't set it down so it keeps all the ingredients in it. It says you, you can't put your burger down. Once you pick it up, you can't set it down. You're committed, you're committed to the burger. And then you eat it in one bite is what we're saying. Just like, no, you just, have to, you just have to eat it and then you have to hold it while you eat your french fries and you know you're drinking your water. You have to continuously hold the burger. He is big on that. I think I just eat it so fast. <laughs> and the burgers are big too. Are you? How tall are you guys? How, what are our anthropomorphics here? What are, Ooh, I am. Is that a hundred dollars right there? <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. Uh, I am six foot six one, uh, two twenty one. Two twenty one. That is very specific. I'm a big boy. I'm a big boy. Okay. I'm a five eleven, maybe six foot on a good day. And then uh I'm about like one ninety five, two hundred right now. Sick. So I'm about five eleven and <laughs> I'm five eleven. I ain't I'm six one with my boots on. No. Yeah. Five eleven, about one ninety five, two hundred. Solid. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we got some we got some height and size. Um, what has it been like growing your social media? Like, has it been weird? Uh, it's definitely been crazy. I did not expect it at all. It just kind of blew up. You know, I was making videos for a bunch of different companies and brands. And then it just kind of dawned on me. I was like, if I'm making videos for other people. Like, why not myself? Mm-hmm. And so then I started. It sounds like it could go a lot of ways. Yeah. Fans. Are we, are we... <laughs> and What's then, on uh, uh, <laughs> Nichols, stay beefy feet. <laughs> yeah. I do love my toe spacers, so you might. Do you use toe uh, spacers? Why? Well, tell me about the toe spacers. You have them. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. What? <laughs> uh, I kept them on. Shut up. Yeah. So okay. that happened. You jump on um, when you do them too. Hashtag, thoughts, <laughs> yeah. like, influencer. I love these things. Um, But uh, yeah, so I mean, I just started recording my workouts. And then I think like, it was back before, like, I was one of maybe like, in the beginning stages, like of the first like kind of content creators that were like, putting motivational, like, oh, yeah, audio and that stuff behind like my workouts. And holy shit, like that stuff just kind of took off at like another level where it was getting to like you know a quarter million like a million like six hundred thousand like per video and i'm just like what the fuck and it continued like that for about like six months um i started just pushing content out like daily and kind of grew from there and you know a lot of people were asking like oh like what's your training like and that's kind of what started the conversation of us starting our own program it was like part of our agreement was like all right so like now i'm you know Anyone that asks about like training, I'll send to Jeremy, but Jeremy's only doing one on one training at a time. And so he became like quickly like overloaded. So I was like, all right, we need to figure something out where if like people ask me about training, we have something for everybody. Mm-hmm. And instead of trying to like create Try something my new, <laughs> join my wait list. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Subscribe. Well, that's right. well, the problem is, I'm a, work- I'm a workaholic, so I won't do it with yeah. I've, yeah. I've since, since then I have just because I've valued like the, the the attention that I give people. So I've created kind of a, a cap to myself. Um, mm-hmm. 
But yeah, initially I didn't, and it was just one of those things. Well, we gotta find something, or it was one of those things like you get that middle, like hey, someone doesn't really have the goals for the individual and, and the price that, that is, and but then they want something. It's like well, that's where I felt like we were missing. It was like, man, there's so many people that need structure, mm-hmm. need to get on a program, and so, bam, we launched it. Yeah, and so yeah, the goal is to you know motivate, inspire people, but also like keep it light and fun. Um, I like to do just some like skits with my buddy just have a good time keep it light and fun you know and yeah you guys seem like pretty light and fun people i mean like in general you know what i mean like obviously we've been on this for an hour and a 10 minutes it's about like 10 minutes at least to me hopefully it's not (laughs) least to you but um you know it's 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 fun it's easy it's easy to be around you guys and like learn and um but what have been some of like some of the shit sandwiches you've had to eat recently like what's some of the, like the tough stuff in life that maybe people don't see on social media or that you know kind of put that humanistic aspect to you guys as professionals oh, man I'll, My well, was last week what's <laughs> that? jeremy's what? is like My cheeseburger they forgot the cheese last week <laughs> yeah yeah right Just um you know i think I'll go first. It's just, I think for me, it's finding a balance. Like, you know, I, I went through after, after quarterfinals, really missing it for like the second, third year in a row. Like I kind of focused on a lot of business thing. Like I own an, like an investment company that you know, buys businesses and helps people grow. And, um, I got like super deep into that where I realized I didn't like have time to train. Like I was, and it was like kind of getting to me a little bit. I was trying to hold on to like how I was training, but I didn't have the capacity to, um, you know, it, it affects like relationships outside of the gym for me and like everything like that to where it's like finally like finding a balance that like makes me happy where it's like, Hey, if it's 30 minutes, 40 minutes and I can get it done and still continue to grow. And then now these businesses are getting to a point now here in August where like, oh, like I have my time again. Um, you know, it, it kind of gets me out of the cycle like work 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 because i'm a workaholic so uh, that's probably been something for me that like, i don't share a lot on social media it's kind of like the, the the pain of you know like i tell my athletes sleep 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 and then i'll catch myself on a zoom call at like 10 30 at night like mm-hmm. like calling mm-hmm. calling nick being like this is what we need to do or like calling you know one of my like my vice president of my company, like, Hey, we need to do this. Like, and it's like, wait, hold up. Like I tell people all day long, like as many hours sleep before midnight as you can, like limit blue light. And here I am at 10 45, like staring at a screen. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. And so you know, that's just a check on myself of kind of recently what's been going on. And, but you know, I, I, I was fine. I, t- I took a trip to Hawaii for eight days. Um, and, uh, my doctor's like your blood pressure went down i was like sick <laughs> no way yeah. weird <laughs> yeah exactly yeah it's legit i mean i forget to eat all the time and it's not because it's not a priority but it's plant and planning oh, to fail so glad you said that yeah and i mean like that's like I, it's just you know what i mean so literally i i bought five boxes of bars yesterday my favorite bars bear bells way to go for sure but uh it's just kind of one of those things where it's like i'm not bar dependent i'm not supplement dependent but when shit hits the fan and my priorities like stuff has to get done or life is just a certain way and i know i have aesthetic goals and i know i have physical goals and competitive goals and like all goal 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 work goals like everyone has goals and when you're committed to those things you've got to be flexible about your methods right and like it's, it's really easy to get like you're saying like just ingrained in the grind and it's passion you're just it's so great Mm-hmm. you know what i mean like i like love what i do i love everything about it i love it business owning a business is the hardest shit i've ever done i i'm surprised i still have hair on my head like want to rip these strands out most days but i don't want to look like you jeremy so no i'm just kidding I'm, oh. No. Oh, i was gonna say it myself you broke you beat it to me <laughs> but, <laughs> it's gnarly i mean nick what's some of the yeah. what's some of the stuff like that goes out the window for you or what's been tough for you lately yeah Mine relates to you a lot with kind of owning and operating my own media business. You know, I was sitting very comfortable for like the last year and a half or so. I had a couple of clients on retainer and, you know, I allowed myself to get comfortable. And, you know, as of a few months ago, like I parted ways with those clients and it's just like, all right, like shit just hit the fan. Like, like most of my income is like 
gone now. Now I've got to, you know, try to find other jobs, other gigs and whatnot. And so. Was that expected or did you, was it kind of pretty abrupt and you're just like, oh shit. No, it was expected. Um, but, you know, I allowed myself to like get comfortable, you know, and I wasn't, you know, always actively like looking for new things to do and try. I just got very complacent and comfortable with where I was at. Mm -hmm. um, and so now it's kind of like shit hit the fan. So, you know, you kind of panic for like a little bit. Um, but, you know, it's just getting out there, trying new things. It's also very exciting. And then like training and going to new places just like opened a lot of doors for me. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've been finding you know, a lot of work, but, um, trying to find that balance has just been very, very tough because I was so comfortable for a while. And now it's kind of like, all right, I gotta, I gotta figure like the new, the new life out. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah. How do you guys manage like your social lives? Like, do you have wives, husbands, boyfriends, girlfriends, cats, dogs, like what's going on there? Yeah. So I have a girlfriend. Around? There's nobody. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a girlfriend um, and then two dogs. And so, you know, it's, it's always something funny. Like she allows, she brings a balance. She forces me to kind of have a balance. Cause like, I think when I was back when I was single, it was like work, sleep and eat. And that was all I did. And now it's like, you know, I always, I'm traveling a bunch. I'm learning the kind of the balance of that. And, and, you know, she, she helps me out a lot around, around like things I have to do. So, Uh -oh. you might have lost you. Uh -oh. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I got you. All right, cool. Uh, just understanding that, like, um, you know, my social life is important, and that's important to my goals because I will work myself to death. And it's like forcing myself out of that routine that I had um, is a good thing. It's not always a bad thing. So, you know, for me, it, it's I stay athletic. Like, I my social life is a lot of activities, like pickleball, golf, like things like that. And, and then traveling a bunch, like um, I always traveled for work a long time ago, but now it's like, now I'm traveling more for me. Um, and so that's kind of the plan right now. Yeah, same. Pretty much just training and work and just finding times to connect with buddies and just go have fun. Yeah, that's Here's right. Use the, the boardwalk, your shirt off, nipples out. I love going to the beach, it's pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> Is that where you pick up all your hussies or what? No. Uh, no, it's just a fun excuse to get out of the house, get some sunshine, and then just kind of reflect. Do people approach you on social media now that you've, like, grown, grown quite a bit? Like, slide, What's, like, the weirdest DM you've gotten? I, I mean, it's mostly dudes. Um, <laughs> Toe picks, dude. Yeah. So you get, <laughs> bro. Yeah, you get quite a bit of that, so... <laughs> Do you? Yeah. You feel like you're saying we, like, we went to we went to Zach Bryan and um I I heard where you're going with Alex. <laughs> it's just funny because that is true. Um really but we went to, yeah, quite a bit. We went to Zach Bryan in uh Red Rock and like I think it was one or two people like stopped and was like, dude, are you stay beefy guy? Oh, that was the most random thing ever. Yeah. We randomly got to like a random spot in the amphitheater. And I remember like, I turned around and the dude goes, hey, stay beefy. And I was like, shut up. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I follow you on social media. And I was like, dude. <laughs> that was like the first, like, later that night, like I think it's one of the most serious conversations we had where it's like, man, maybe we should make an app. Like, <laughs> maybe yeah. we should actually try and like grow this. And you just got recognized at a random concert. Yeah. That's fair. Isn't it so weird? Cool. You think that to like social media, it seems so huge and like deep ocean. And then you get out in the real world and you're just like, it's not so that small. big. Yeah, no. Really. No. Yeah, exactly. Um, Jeremy, I got to ask you. So you said you travel a lot. Um, do you travel to your popcorn shops or? So <laughs> I, I, I have not yet. But uh, there's a big festival happening in South Carolina in October. And, and that's where it's located. Festival? No, it's like, a, it's in Greenville, South Carolina. It's called Poppington's Gourmet Popcorn. Um, you know, and I, the, the acquisition wait, 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 actually wait. Is this a popcorn festival? No, 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 no. It's like a community event, but like millions of people go. 
Yeah. And so, but our, the stores located or our headquarters is located on main street. Um, so it's a big month for us, but, uh, so is it a popcorn no, store? Or no. Yeah. 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 It's a full on popcorn store. Just some back history for audio listeners. We had someone ask about the popcorn store. And I didn't just pull this popcorn question out of my ass. <laughs> like, yeah. So I, really I guess I see the question, like, why did I buy it? Like, again, like my investment company acquires businesses, helps, you know, we get me and my business partner get put into like, um, you know, executive roles to help grow the company. And this one kind of got presented to us probably back in March timeframe. And uh, we closed on it pretty quickly and acquired the business and, you know, we're taking it to a next level. Like, and so the why is simply just because, you know, from an investment standpoint, it's very, very good. And also it's the best popcorn I've ever had. Like I'm not it's a popcorn really guy. It's really a popcorn shop. Yeah. yeah I thought the margin on a yeah. piece of popcorn has got to be pretty high. Yeah. No, I'll send you some. Like popping to this popcorn. In the wrong industry. <laughs> what? I think I'm in the wrong industry. I think popcorn is going <laughs> to. It's one of the fastest growing things. As silly as it is. And then you, you see the profit margin. It's not so oh. good. <laughs> but um, no, it's, I haven't been there yet, but I'm going to head out there in October. So if you're in Greenville, South Carolina, and you want to train, let me know. It sure. sounds awful. I don't want to go there. <laughs> <laughs> Very small town. I'm like in California, Nevada, West Coast, like. Just for, no, I shouldn't even say that. But the, did you know there's two West, Virginias? There's a West Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> Does it fit? So a question that's interesting. Yeah, I've actually gotten this a lot. <laughs> I've gotten this question a lot. That Anna just asked, like, does it fit the macros? So that's one of those things where it's like dose is always important, right? Like same thing with any drug. Like dosing is important, and so it's like. Am I going to go to a high level athlete that's competing at the highest level, like looking to peak performance, but hey, have this popcorn? No. But, you know, for the average individual, like. What are you trying to say about me? You're going to send me popcorn and tell me I'm not an elite athlete? What the fuck, man? (laughs) Just because I don't have any followers, sick. <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's everything's dose dependent. So if you eat the whole bag, yeah, it's not bad for you. you know, a little treat here and there is not, not going to hurt you. That's fair. I had a piece of pizza for the last three days. No, I guess it was a couple of days ago, but like three days in a row, I was like, I'm going to have pizza for breakfast. Do you know how many people would not believe that I had pizza for breakfast? I'm like, yes, I did. I did. And I, did. I loved it. And I loved it. <laughs> I made and cookies. I did the classic where it like blends into one cookie pie. And I'm like, well, I just had one cookie. So I'm good. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I won't even go near those things in the store. I'm like, mm, no. I'm just like standing over it like. <laughs> <laughs> Little kids walking by like, mommy, that lady's on good with drugs. <laughs> <laughs> the whole fucking thing, actually. Um, That's cute. Fair. All right. Well, what is uh what does the next six months look like? We're halfway through more than halfway through the year. Uh it's starting to get dark earlier, which is shitty. But uh what does it look like? Are we anyone have a, a wedding coming up? Anyone getting engaged? Give me the tea. Oh, the tea. Oh, don't uh, make it man, we have we have a source for the tea. I, we okay. have a buddy who we can text at any moment and get the tea on anybody okay. in the process. So we're an hour and a half into this podcast, and you're just now telling us about the tea. I can't give I can't give our source, but I just know if I texted him right now, I can get groundbreaking news for this podcast. One hundred percent. Nick knows what I'm talking about. We're gonna have to ask exactly you time, man. Uh, <laughs> have to take two on this because you blew we'll it. We'll be we'll be <laughs> recurring, recurring guests. Oh, especially if it's like near the CrossFit games. I can get you. It is near the cross. This could have been the coolest episode ever. <laughs> you cool? You're saying your episode is not cool. <laughs> do we need to do this again tomorrow? <laughs> hey, episode two that. next week, two days before the CrossFit Games. We'll really we'll throw we'll throw a wrench in the whole CrossFit game. Oh, uh, uh, but you know, looking forward. Uh, about my okay, leave them out. <laughs> we can talk about everyone yeah. else but my athletes. <laughs> I actually worked out with uh, Abby Don yesterday. Oh, really? Yeah, she she's coached by one of like the best mentors I've ever had. Um, oh, yeah. And, 
he's in the she's in the area and me and him are actually really really close we've been close for like six years and so they were messing around with some log stuff and just saying be careful she might be a top 10 athlete so don't sleep on her um oh, no. but uh yeah it's you know the next next six months so i know like for the performance driven life crew like we're trying to grow that and, and really get our community going and um, we're all going to i'm going to push that everyone does the tfx qualifiers especially if you're following stay beefy i know a lot of my individual crossfit athletes are doing that um i think brandon i'm going to interrupt you brandon brought that up earlier at tfx started station today for team beefy yeah. yeah so that's kind of what the program's leading towards it's kind of a a, a peak for tfx and that way when it comes to the finale like we can get a whole crew out there and um you know is that just because you're in Texas and you want everyone to come to your house, or is that like, you know? Yes. Yeah. I, mean, I, I think TFX uh, I mean, Jeremy <laughs> Field is a great job. Get in my stick. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think Jeremy Field does a good job, and so I think it's just a well put together competition, and it's it's like big enough to where it's like some stuffs on the line, but it's not so big where you know it's a little kind of messy, um, and so I think? like that. What do you think? Uh, uh, what do you think is going to happen with Waterpalooza, California, or West Coast? Man, I think that's actually going to be pretty solid. Um, you know, I think that if they can get the structure right, like I qualified for Waterpalooza a couple years ago, and I just I pushed a bunch of athletes down there, and I just didn't like the structure of it. Um, you know, and it, it seemed to be kind of changing over time. I think that in Miami, they were running out of space. Um, oh. Like, like I competed there, and it was just kind of like, man, like, the barbells, like, if you didn't drop it perfectly, like, you were going to hit the guy next to you. Mm-hmm. And it was, like, just stuff like that and the growlers. I think they're going to have a little bit more space in Huntington Beach. So I'm interested to see how that goes. I'm just kind of curious on the structure of how they lay out the weekend, they lay out the divisions. Like, I remember when I went, there was – hundred divisions and it was like oh my god like mm-hmm. where am i going type thing i know last year they kind of changed it up to more of a team aspect and like had the individuals go early <clears throat> just kind of depends i think a lot of potential there i think also uh vendors might be more open to going to huntington beach than uh, like if you're on the west, if you're west coast base right like you guys it's like colorado Florida. Florida. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's like you know west coast based companies are probably gonna get a little bit more involved it's, where I go business wise, it's like, you know, how are we gonna get like brands there? Um, mm-hmm. I know with um, what's his name now heading that company, but um, you know, that's kind of where we're going with it. I think it would be good, good for the sport. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, for um, sure. Yeah. yeah, and there's not yeah. really been, like, I mean, what we have Norcal Classic, that's coming up in September. Uh, are you guys gonna, either of you gonna be there? So I'm, I won't, I'm not good. Who knows? Like I kind of, I can float. So if come you need out. someone to come, yeah, I'll, I'll come hang out. Yeah. Um, when did you say it was? Uh, it's September eighth. Weekend at September eighth. Okay. Dude, Nick, let's yeah. do it. I mean, you got family up there, right, Nick? Yeah, that's coming up. Yeah. Yeah, like, I want to get both. Um, and it'd be fun. I like one of those and, and kind of seeing again because I part of me sees what goes wrong and part of me is like, wow, this is super cool. Like. And then just being with brands that have the same vision as me. Um, so, yeah. So, you're going to come hang out. Yes. Yeah. We'll come, we'll come hang out. Yeah. We'll, we'll do me with Jeremy and Nick at the Swolverine booth. <laughs> yeah, I'm down. I'm down. Um, yeah. And then I think I'm going to try and move to Hawaii here shortly. What island? Uh, the big uh, Oahu. Is that big enough? For your six foot one self, <laughs> you're a little small. So. The doctor yeah. recommended to lower his blood pressure. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, I prescribed him to Hawaii. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. But okay. I close okay. up your strong. Awesome. So you'll come to NorCal Classic. We'll go visit Abby after she crushes the CrossFit Games, get some steak at your house. And then when you move to Hawaii, we'll all kind of like meet up there. And exactly. So this is how exactly. I have friends. Of course, people will be my friends. <laughs> Hi, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'm super down to come to the NorCal Classic. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, 
And then, you know, like I said, if you guys are ever down here in San Antonio, like, come on by. Yeah, that would be awesome. Nick, what does the next six months look like for you? Uh, Let's see. Next six months, help grow performance-driven life, grow the media business, hopping in a couple competitions next month. Uh, We've got this painkiller up at Venice Beach, and there's another one, uh, run, lift, hang. I'm just going to do for fun. Mm-hmm. Um, Are you going to – have you thought about doing the Wadapalooza qualifier? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. I did it last year. Um, I kind of shot myself in the foot, though, because it was the same exact time as the TFX qualifier. Mm-hmm. And, oh, Lordy, trying to do two qualifiers that are – it was just a lot. Um, yeah. And so just kind of, I guess, depending on the timing of them, I might have to, like, pick and choose – but yeah, I'd love to, especially if it's going to be right across the street from the house, right over there. Um, oh, we'd love man. to get a team out there. Or... I don't know how they're oh, going to do it. Have you guys you seen that? What? that? How they're going to do it? Yeah. I, think I don't think do they're going out about the qualifier for all right. I think they're going to do a springtime qualifier. So they, okay. that would make them do the one in September for January in Miami and then like yeah, following the open or around like now time frame, do one for September. Okay, yeah. So but I, I was gonna say I forgot. Nick and I are trying to plan like by the end of the year a fitness retreat. Ooh. Where in Colorado, in like Denver area or Boulder, um, but we're trying to plan like a community fitness event where it's like a three day thing, paddleboard, hike yoga workout then have like an educational series behind it where hey you'll come like an hour and a half of each day we'll teach you about kind of fitness and health like and just kind of leave it open to question and answers and um and then do something fun as a community like you know hey we're going to go paddle boarding as a group and we're going to do a, this hike you know nick grew up there so um or knows that area really well and so it's like one of those things where like it'd be a lot of fun like, and so that's kind of what we want to do is we continue to grow the performance of life community. It's like, let's all meet up, throw down some workouts, have some good smoldering protein. Um, and then. Ooh. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, this year, but, yeah. Some books, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So hopefully that kicks off soon. It'd be good. Mm-hmm. That'd be rad. That'd be really cool. Um, that is exciting. Yeah. Keep us posted so that we can, you know, get the word out there. I think that'd be a really cool event for you guys. So yeah, I agree. Yeah. Well, you guys, I love that you tuned in. Thank you for hanging with us. Um, Nick, you can find him on Instagram, Nick O Sully. So N I C K O S U L L Y. And then we also got Jeremy Kane. We got at J E R underscore K A N E. Um, you can find the training programs, the stay beefy, the stay lean. You can chime in. You can say, what's up. You can say, Nick, your mustache looks like shit. Jeremy, where'd your hair go? Um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta, I mean, we gotta rile it up a little bit. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm down. I always, if you can do shit, just be able to take it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, you can come to my page and put your ass away, Alex. Okay. <laughs> 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 oh, it's just there. It's just the you know, squat. You know, ever heard of it? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> no, my back squat is garbage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. Like, That's why I, know. I had that in my back pocket. Really. Yeah, I have my deadlift, my fucking back squat for sure. Yeah. yeah, well, it's been awesome to hang with you guys. Make sure to go find the performance driven life. Um, put some uh, BCAs in your margaritas. I don't know, Anna, if that collagen is going to be a good idea, but uh, might not be as well. But <laughs> uh, subscribe, you guys, to the Soul Friends podcast. Make sure to listen and share. We go live with uh, individuals just like Nick and Jeremy to bring you guys high quality value and entertainment on a weekly basis. We go live. So whatever happens, happens. And then we have that audio up on all according um, podcast stations. So Spotify, Apple Podcasts. We also host on Twitch live. Some really cool things like that. You guys, I really appreciate you. And uh, we'll catch up with you next time when we probably next week when we roast the CrossFit Games. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) For real. I look forward to it. Yeah. Again, you're more than welcome to come. With our mystery <laughs> guests. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to have a conversation after this, okay? All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. We'll catch up with you next time.